The commander of U.S. and NATO forces in Afghanistan says he's not bound by the July 2011 date set for a troop pullout. General David Petraeus said he could well advise President Obama not to go ahead if he believes it is the wrong time. American public support for the war is at an all-time low, with July being the deadliest month for U.S. and NATO troops since 2001. With frustration growing about the occupation of Afghanistan, now politicians in Germany have even suggested talking to the Taliban and terrorist organizations to try to avoid a further escalation of violence. Frederick William Engdahl, an author of the best-selling book Century of War, joins us now on the line from Frankfurt. Thanks for being with us tonight. Uh, it was the Spiegel magazine that reported this, that some members of the German parliament want dialogue with the Taliban, one of the most notable, the uh, German vice chancellor. Uh, is this a sign of complete desperation? It's a sign that the German population is really fed up with the entire deployment of NATO troops to Afghanistan, and uh, really they can't quite understand what uh, what the purpose is. Uh, the comments about uh, pulling out by July of next year are simply ludicrous, as Petraeus indicated. The uh, the NATO troops and and certainly the U.S. Force Command are are not at all planning to pull out because. The Afghan uh, occupation, you have to understand, is nothing to do or very little to do with Afghanistan per se. It has to do with Russia, it has to do with China, it has to do with the Central Asian countries and spreading what some have called a 30 years war scenario to prevent the independent development economically of China, Russia and the SCO, Shanghai Cooperation States. So. This is all politics on the part of Obama about pulling out next July. Let's go back. Yeah, we'll talk about that in just a second, if we may. I want to push a little bit more on that. But um, talking about what uh, what these German politicians are asking for, are they really being practical at the end of the day? They say they want dialogue, but only possible, the big catch here, if fundamental human rights and the rights of women is going to be recognized by the Taliban. Uh, are they being realistic? Well, there's even a question, what is the Taliban in, in Afghanistan today? Because uh, the U.S. The Pentagon press releases call any quote-unquote opposition groups that are trying to get uh, occupy, occupation armies out of their country after 30 years of war, uh, they call them the Taliban automatically. And it's very unclear whether uh, this is an organized force as it was before uh, October uh, 2001. But uh, the German politicians uh, in the conservative wing are really quite desperate at this point because uh, they realize that this is a highly unpopular war. Uh, German soldiers are coming back in body bags and, and uh, they can't uh, fathom the sense of it. So they're, uh, they're fishing for some kind of dialogue. The human rights thing is, is simply a face-saving device, uh, which means that they uh, are pretending to do something, where in reality they're not going to do anything. What's going on with the American top brass? General Petraeus appears, doesn't he, on the face of it at least, to be backpedalling on that 2011 pullout date. Uh, is it suggesting there's no uniform agreement among the top U.S. decision makers about how to proceed in Afghanistan? Well, I think the Pentagon is calling the shots on this, and, and the deployment is part of what I talk about in, in my book, Full Spectrum Dominance, and that is the uh, prevention, it's the Bush Doctrine of 2002, the prevention of a coalescing of any group of states or nations that could challenge the economic hegemony or domination of the United States. And China and Russia are in the center of the, that effort by, by the Pentagon, by the U.S. since 2001. So uh, like it or not, uh, Afghanistan the uh, the role of the U.S. military seems to be to protect the opium fields, the poppy and heroin production of the uh, Afghan farmers, so that the uh, U.S. Air Force planes, as, as General Gould of the Pakistani ISI said recently, uh, U.S. Air Force planes out of Manas in Kyrgyzstan uh, fly those opium and heroin shipments directly into Russia in sealed airplanes that uh, no Russian authorities are allowed to inspect. And there's a huge uh, heroin and opium uh, addiction problem in Russia and in Western Europe as a result of this Afghan uh, opium supply Brief that's exploded briefly, since Mr. the U.S. Engel, occupation. Briefly, time, Mr. time's a little against us. Just got one last question. So as far yes. as you see it, what are we likely to witness uh, when uh, this date in 2011 comes along a year from now? Are we likely to see a pullout? I see no pullout in the cards uh, from the U.S. military. 
what I see is that the U.S. is getting bogged down like Russia did uh, back in the late 70s into a quagmire that will be analogous to another Vietnam for the United States uh, troop forces. But they're going to try to spread this into Kyrgyzstan, into Uzbekistan, uh, uh, fund surrogate ter terrorism in order to justify a broadened NATO presence. And I think the German parliamentarians are signaling that Europe is not uh, quite willing to go along with that agenda. Mr. Engdahl, thanks for being with us tonight. Author, as you are, of the best-selling book, Century of War, are joining us on the line from Frankfurt. Thank you.